Welcome to this episode of Guys, Guns, and Gears. We're going to go through a full hydro steering system um, with an orbital valve, double-ended ram, cooling, and remote reservoir with a pump. So this can apply to any number of configurations, but that's the configuration that I'm running on this one. Um, fairly generic setup here. Um, so as you'll see, things are roughed in. A lot of things uh, temporary right now from the upper shock tower cross brace um, to a number of the ways that the, the cooler is mounted. Lines are run right now. Uh, but for mock-up at least, this uh, should get everything configured where it needs to end up. Uh, so I'm going to walk you through the system. We start here with an orbital valve. Orbital valve has steering input from the steering wheel. This has a removable one. Um, and just run through a few technical things the way it's labeled. This is upside down, so tank and pressure, T and P. Tank is a return to tank, or in this case, we're returning to the cooler. And pressure is our input pressure coming to the orbital valve. And then over here, we've got A and B ports, and I've labeled them here for you. So A port steers left, B port steers right. Now on this vehicle also, I've got hydro uh, boost on the brakes. You'll see that here. So the way these work is we've got our input pressure or our output from our Saginaw pump down there off the Cummins. First, it goes into the hydro boost uh, brakes. Then it goes out from there. So brakes get priority over steering. Then we go out from there to our orbital valve. And then it's either directed to the left pressure line or the right pressure line, which is going down to our double-ended ram down here. Then as it flows one way, it returns the other way into the orbital valve and returns to tank. In this case, as I mentioned, we're running to a cooler. So it's going from the orbital valve into the bottom of the cooler. And we load, load the bottom of the cooler first so that it fills the bottom it fills the whole thing and it comes to the top and exits out the top, in the bottom, out the top. And we do that versus the other way around because if we fill the top, it could trickle its way down. Instead of being completely full, it could potentially have air pockets in there, which allows the air to circulate um, and foam, get air pockets and whatnot. So we always load the bottom, empty the top. And then our return line goes to our reservoir. So this reservoir has three ports in it. There's a, a pressure return or a, a low, low pressure, I should say, return line from the hydro boost that goes into the reservoir. And then we've got the line coming from the orbital valve that goes to the cooler, cooler, back to the reservoir. And then the reservoir is then feeding our Saginaw pump down here. And the Saginaw pump also has a reservoir. So we've got two different reservoirs, but the PSC has three fittings on the back and our Saginaw has two fittings. And our PSC does have a vent, as you see on the top of it as well. So I'm gonna run through the hose sizing. Pretty standard uh, stuff here, what we've got. So our pressure lines, our dash six lines. That's a three eighths line. So dash six, uh, six out of 16. So six divided by 16 would be 0.375, which is three eighths. That's how the numbering system works on these hoses. And then my low pressure lines going to the cooler and bringing it back to the reservoir are dash eight. So half inch lines, half of 16, eight. And then my line coming from my reservoir I'm going to come around the other side here into my pump. So this has no pressure. It's only gravity feeding the pump reservoir, the Saginaw pump reservoir down here. And this, as you see, I put a dash 12 on. So those are our hose sizes that we're running on the hydro boost and full hydraulic steering system. This is the steering ram. Uh, I ran a uh, uh, big shocks double ram here. Uh, first time I've run one of these. Been super impressed with their quality. Their customer service was fantastic. They're also located here in Michigan. 
Um, they were very, very knowledgeable on that. The next thing I want to talk about is packaging. Some vehicles are going to be very easy packaging. If you're going to put this on your uh, lifted up Chevy Ford Dodge truck with a big 8-inch lift and uh, basic suspension, it's very, very simple to package all these things. You've got lots of room under the hood, lots of room for the steering. Uh, this is quite different. As you see, this is a Ram Charger. Um, right now, we're ri sitting at ride height. Again, things are just mocked up, but we've got uh, only about four or five inches of extension on the 14 inch coilovers right now. So this is actually ride height for this setup. And as the suspension would bottom out, and I did run this earlier, um, these hoses nearly contact or just touch our track bar here. Um, so it was quite a challenge on this to get everything um, to fit with this steering. I actually originally was gonna run full mechanical with hydro assist and just packaging really became difficult. I'm going for low center of gravity, uh, very low overall height on this build. And uh, this was the way I had to package it to make it fit and still keep things up and out of the rocks as, as best of it as I could. Hopefully that answers a few questions on a, a hydro system, full hydro steering on this vehicle. And like I say, fairly straightforward. But if you've never done it, the internet is a wealth of information. Hopefully this video helps as well. If you've got any questions or comments, please put them in the comments section below. Thanks for watching and uh, hope this helped.